हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज़ मनप्रीत आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लॉज पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ आई एम हेयर टू मेक अ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑर्गन ऑफ द स्टेट एंड सर्विसेज अंडर द स्टेट इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन आई विल बी कविंग द फॉलोइंग टॉपिक्स फर्स्टली द एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑर्गन ऑफ द स्टेट इंक्लूडिंग यूनियन एग्जैक्टिव एंड स्टेट एग्जैक्टिव एंड सेकेंडली आई बी एक्सप्लेन द प्रोविजन रिलेटिंग टू सर्विसेज अंडर द स्टेट इंक्लूडिंग सेफ गार्ड्स अवेलेबल टू सिविल सर्वेंट्स इन एवरी मॉडर्न स्टेट देर आर थ्री ऑर्गन लेजिस्लेचर एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड जुडिशरी द फंक्शन ऑफ द लेजिस्लेचर इज टू मेक लॉज द फंक्शन ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटिव इज टू इम्प्लीमेंट दोज लॉज एंड द फंक्शन ऑफ जुडिशरी इज टू इंटरप्रेट द लॉज वाइल डिसाइडिंग डिस्प्यूट बिटवीन द पार्टीज एंड टू एडमिनिस्टर जस्टिस बिटवीन द पार्टीज सिंस वी हैव ए फेडरल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट द यूनियन ऑल दीज थ्री ऑर्गन आर फॉर दिस कैटेगराइज इन टू यूनियन एंड द स्टेट Similarly, executive organ of the state, we have union executive and state executive. Now, starting with the union executive, since we have parliamentary form of government, therefore, the union executive consists of the president, the prime minister, and the council of ministers. According to Article seventy four of the Constitution, president. can exercise all the powers vested in him only on the aid and advice of prime minister and his council of ministers in india president is the nominal head whereas real head is the prime minister and his council of ministers the president is bound by the aid and advice of prime minister and his council of ministers the president of india is the first citizen of the country and is also the head of the state and as well as union executive he is elected indirectly by electoral college consisting of elected members of parliament state legislature legislative assemblies as well as the uts of delhi and pondicherry now talking about the qualifications of president he must be a citizen of india he must have completed 35 years of age he should be qualified to get elected to the lok sabha he must not hold office under the central government or state government or local or other authority subject to the control of any of the said governments however article 59 clearly provides that president cannot be a member of any house of the union or the state legislature the president holds office for a term of 5 years but he can resign also before completing his term however he can also be removed from his office he can be removed from his office only on the ground of violation of the constitution this process is called impeachment of the president now talking about the powers of president there are six categories of powers of the president firstly we will be discussing executive powers then legislative powers judicial powers financial powers diplomatic powers and lastly emergency powers of the president now talking about the executive powers of the president the executive powers of the union are vested in the president article 53 provides that similarly article 77 of the indian constitution provides that all executive functions are executed in the name of the president similarly all appointments of the union are made by him similarly he is the supreme commander of the defense forces of india it is only the president that he, that he has the power to declare war or peace talking about his legislative powers he summons and prorogues the sessions of parliament lok sabha sessions begin with the president's address a bill introduced in and passed by parliament cannot become a law unless the president gives assent likewise article 123 of the indian constitution confers ordinance making power on him this power he can exercise when the both the houses of parliament are not in session and there is an emergency situation and a law is required to be made to cater to that situation since parliament is not in session therefore this power is conferred on the president to make a law now the rules and regulations made by made by the president to to satisfy this this requirement we call it ordinance 
since we follow the system of separation of parts, we have borrowed this concept from America, but we have not borrowed this concept very strictly. We under our constitution, we have allowed certain exceptional circumstances where one organ can perform or where one organ can enter into the domain of another organ. Ordinance making power is one such, such example where the executive body that is the president at the union level, he is performing the legislative function. Now talking about the judicial powers of the president, president makes important judicial appointments. He appoints chief justice of India and also the other judges of supreme court and high court. He also has the power to, guard, to grant pardons to a convict under article 72. He can remove a judge if the parliament proposes a resolution against him. Similarly, president also enjoys certain financial powers. Firstly, a money bill can be introduced in the Lok Sabha only on the recommendation of the president. He also appoints Finance Commission of India. Similarly, the president of India also enjoys certain diplomatic powers. He sends and receives ambassadors and other diplomatic representatives. All international documents, agreements and treaties are negotiated and concluded in his name. These provisions show that he is just a nominal head. The real head is the Prime Minister. In our, in our country, we have the parliamentary form of government as compared to presidential form of government as it exists in America. President has the authority to declare an emergency also. The Indian constitution provides for the three types of emergency. These emergency provisions we have borrowed from Germany. First one is national emergency, which is defined under article 352 of the constitution. If the president feels that the country's integrity and security is in danger because of war, external aggression or armed rebellion, then he can declare national emergency. Secondly, we have state emergency, we also call it president's rule. This is given under article 356. President has the power to declare an emergency in a particular state on the ground of breakdown of constitutional machinery in that state. And thirdly, we have financial emergency, which is defined under article 360. It says that if the president feels that the country's financial stability is in danger, he has the power to declare financial emergency also. Now talking about the vice president of India, article 63 provides that there shall be a vice president of India. Vice president is the ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha. He is elected by the members of both the houses of parliament at a joint session through the system of proportional representation by way of single transferable vote. The system adopted for voting is secret ballot. He possesses the same qualifications as are applicable to the president with the only difference that he must be eligible for election to Rajya Sabha. He enjoys a term of 5 years but may resign before the expiry of his term. He may also be removed from his office by the majority of members of Rajya Sabha by passing a resolution. But this resolution must be agreed to by a majority of the members of Lok Sabha. Now we will discuss the functions of the Vice President. He presides over the meetings of Rajya Sabha. He acts as President in case of vacancy in the office of president till a new president is elected. He also acts as president in case the president is unable to discharge his functions due to absence, illness, etc. Then comes the prime minister. Prime minister in India is the real head. He is the head of the council of ministers and the keystone of the cabinet arc. His resignation means the resignation of the entire council of ministers. The leader of the party in majority in Lok Sabha or a person who is able to win the confidence of the majority in that house is appointed as prime minister by the president. We should understand the pres that president is elected whereas prime minister is appointed. But in case of multiple party system, if there is no single party in power 
and a coalition government is formed, the president may elect the leader of any party who in his opinion can form a stable ministry. Then we will be discussing the functions and duties of the prime minister. The ministers, the council of ministers at the union level are appointed by the president on the recommendation of the prime minister. The prime minister acts as president in case the president is unable to discharge his functions due to absence, illness etc. He coordinates various governmental policies and generates a team spirit among various ministers. He also communicates all the decisions made by the council of ministers to the president. He takes initiatives for improving India's reputation and position at the international level as we have seen in recent times. For example, Narendra Modi, the president of India has visited many countries to improve India's reputation and also relations with the foreign countries. Talking about the duties of the prime minister under article 78. Firstly, he communicates to the president all decisions of the council of ministers relating to the administration of the affairs of the union and proposals for legislation. Secondly, he furnishes such information relating to administration of and the affairs of the union and proposals for legislation as president may call for. And thirdly, if the president so requires to submit for the consideration of the council of ministers any matter on which a decision has been taken by a minister but which has not been considered by the cabinet. Now we will be discussing the council of ministers. The prime minister and his council of ministers form the union government. Each minister is the head of his respective ministry. According to the 91st amendment 2003, the total number of ministers including the prime minister in the council of ministers shall not exceed 15 percent of the total number of members of that house that is the house of people that is Lok Sabha. Though the ministers are the members of either house of parliament but even a non-member can also become a minister provided he becomes a member of parliament within six months. Talking about the responsibility of the council of ministers, the council of ministers are collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. This is provided under article 75 clause 3. They introduce proposals for legislation, law making. The annual budget is presented in the Lok Sabha by the finance minister. They also formulate public policies and foreign policies. Now we are going to discuss the various provisions of the constitution relating to attorney, attorney general of India. The attorney general is the first law officer of the country. The attorney general is appointed by the president and he holds office during the pleasure of the president. In order to be appointed as the attorney general, a person must be qualified to be appointed as the judge of the supreme court. Discussing the duties of attorney general, he advises the government on legal matters. He also performs other legal duties which are referred or assigned to him by the president. He also discharges the functions conferred on him by the constitution itself. Other than his duties, he also exercises certain rights. For example, though he is not a member of the cabinet, but he has the right to speak both in both the houses of parliament or in any committee thereof, but he has no right to vote. In the performance of his official duties, the attorney general shall have a right of audience in all the courts in the territory of India. The attorney general represents the government but is allowed to take up private practice provided the other party is not the state because he represents the state. Because of this he is not paid salary but a retainer is to be determined by the president. The attorney general gets a retainer equivalent to the salary of the judge of the supreme court. This is all about the union executive. Now we will be discussing state executive that is executive organ of the states. The state executive like a union executive has 
number one the governor secondly chief minister and thirdly the council of ministers at the state level the governor is governor holds the same position as president holds at the union level though the powers of president are wider, wider than that of the governor article 153 provides for the office of governor normally there is one governor for each state but it is also possible to appoint the same person as the governor of two or more states the governor is not elected he is appointed by the president and he holds office during the pleasure of the president now we will discuss the qualifications of governor he must be a citizen of india he must have completed 35 years of age he should not be a member of either house of parliament or the state legislature he must possess the qualifications prescribed for membership of the state legislature he must not hold any office of profit the governor is appointed for a term of 5 years however he can relinquish his office earlier by earlier than this term by his resignation to the president the president con, can also remove him from his office before the expiry of his term though he is a nominee of the central government but he cannot be dismissed on the ground that he does not agree with the policies and ideologies of the union government or has lost its confidence now we will discuss the powers of governor like president governor also exercises certain powers for example executive powers legislative powers judicial powers financial powers and emergency powers the governor is the executive head of the state and all executive actions of the state are taken in his name article 154 provides that the executive power of the state is vested in the governor he shall exercise this power either directly or through subordinates he also appoints important officials at the state level including chief minister state ministers advocate general chairman and members of the public commission service commissions but does not appoint the judges of high court it must be remembered that the judges of high court are always appointed by the president and not by the governor talking about his legislative powers the governor is a part of state legislature he has the power to summon or prorogue either house of the state legislature and dissolves the state legislative assembly he addresses the first session of the state legislature after the general elections he sends messages to the state legislature on bills pending before it he may appoint one sixth of the members of the legislative council he appoints one member from the anglo indian community to the state legislative assembly if in his opinion this community is not adequately represented in that house he gives assent to the bills passed by the state legislature he reserves certain bills passed by the legislature for the assent of the president this is provided in article 200 likewise he may make laws through ordinances under article 213 during the recess of the state legislatures he also exercises certain financial powers he ensures that the budget of the state is laid before the state legislature every year all money bills can be introduced in the state legislature only on the recommendation of the governor the governor administers the contingency fund of the state and can advance money out of it to meet unforeseen expenditure pending its authorization by the legislature article 203 provides that demand of grants can be made only on the recommendation of the governor likewise he exercises certain judicial powers the governor is consulted by the president while appointing the chief justice and judges of the state high court he appoint judges of courts below the high court like the president governor also has the power to grant pardons reprieves respites or remissions of the punishment to persons convicted of an offence against state laws it should be noted that the president's power of pardon is wider than that of the governor while the president can pardon a death sentence and punishments of sentences inflicted by court martial governor cannot do so likewise he also exercising certain emergency powers he has the power to make a report to the president 
whenever he is satisfied that the situation has arisen in which a government of the state cannot be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution that is failure of constitutional machinery in the state thereby inviting the president to assume to himself the functions of the government of the state or of any of them when the state is placed under president's rule the governor acts as the representative of the president in the state and assumes extensive powers however it should be noted that the governor can act in his discretion only in matters in which he is expressly required by or under the constitution to do so for example appointment of chief minister dismissal of a minister dissolution of state legislative assembly and advising the president for the proclamation of state emergency under article 356 talking about the chief minister he is also holds an important position in the state like prime minister he was also real head in the state the governor is assisted in the discharge of his duties by the state council of ministers headed by the chief minister the chief minister is appointed by the governor generally the leader of the majority party in the state assembly is appointed as chief minister who holds position identical to that of the prime minister at the center he enjoys a term that runs parallel to that of the state legislature the chief minister recommends to the governor the names of the persons to be appointed as members of the council of ministers and allocates portfolios among them the chief minister is the chief link between the governor and the council of ministers and keeps the former informed of all decisions of the council the council of ministers headed by the chief minister aids and assists the governor the ministers are appointed by the governor on the aid and advice of the council of ministers any person can be appointed as a minister but he ceases to be a minister if he is not elected as a member of the state legislature within 6 months after his appointment as a minister the council of ministers is collectively responsible to the vidhan sabha that is legislative assembly the 91st amendment 2003 has made a provision thereby fixing the minimum the maximum size of ministers the total number of ministers including the chief minister in the council of ministers in the state shall not exceed 15% of the total number of members of the legislative assembly of that state provided that the number of ministers including the chief minister in a state shall not be less than 12 for smaller states now we'll discuss about the advocate general the advocate general is the first law officer in a state in a state he enjoys similar function within the state as are enjoyed by the attorney general at the center he is appointed by the governor and holds office during the pleasure of the governor a person who is qualified to be appointed as a judge of the high court can only be appointed as advocate general he has the right to participate in the proceedings of the houses of the state legislature without the right to vote and he has the right to of audience in any court in the state this is all about the first part of the presentation now we will be discussing the second part concerning the services under the state services make administration of a country more efficient thereby contributing towards the peace prosperity and progress of the country therefore it is very essential to protect the public services from any kind of political or personal influence part 14 containing articles 308 to 323 of the constitution of india deals with the services under the union and the states article 308 excludes the application of the provisions of this part in respect to the state of jammu and kashmir under article 309 recruitment and conditions of services of public servants are contained article 309 empowers the parliament and the state legislature to require to make laws reg- regarding the rec- recruitment and conditions of service of the persons appointed to public services and posts under the union and the states until the appropriate legislature makes such laws the president or governor or an authorized person may make rules for the aforesaid purpose however such law making power of the legislature and the rule making power of the executive must not contravene any provisions of the constitution including fundamental rights under article 14 15 16 and 19 until any provision is made in this behalf under the constitution all the laws in force immediately before the commencement of the constitution and applicable to any public service or any post which continues to exist after the commencement of service or post under the union or the state shall come into force 
so far as consistent with the provisions of this constitution. Rules made under article 309 could be made or amended with retrospective effect. Now we will discuss the limits on the power conferred by article 309. Article 309 is subject to various provisions of the constitution itself including fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy and more particularly article 39D relating to equal pay for equal work. Article 309 is subjected also to the doctrine of pleasure contained in article 310 clause 1. Article 311 which contains procedural safeguards for civil servants also imposes a limitation on power conferred by article 309. Now what are the different powers conferred by article 309? Clause 3 of article 320 though not mandatory in nature requires consultation with the appropriate public service commission in all matters relating to recruitment to serve civil services and civil posts. For example, making promotions, transfers and all disciplinary matters affecting civil services. Besides, there are certain special provisions in the constitution itself regulating the employment and conditions of services of some categories of public servants. To these categories of public servants, the acts or rules made under article 309 would not apply. Article 309 is not applicable to persons who are not government employees. Then a very important doctrine of pleasure we have to discuss after we have, been, we have finished with this topic. Bo this doctrine was borrowed in India from England and is based on public policy. The expression is drawn from the Latin phrase which means during pleasure. In England, the services of a civil servant could be terminated at any time at the will of the crown but without assigning any reason. The doctrine was borrowed under the Government of India Act 1858 and was also retained under the Government of India Act 1919 and 1935. Article 310 of the constitution contains the doctrine of pleasure of, in of India. Every person who is a member of the defense service or of a civil service of the union or of an all India service or holds any post connected with defense or any civil post under the union holds office during the pleasure of the president. Every person who is a member of civil service of the state or holds any post under the state holds office during the pleasure of the governor of the state. Now we will be discussing the implications of article 310 clause 1. The, the power conferred by article 310 clause 1 is not affected by any contract to the contrary provided mandatory provisions of article 311 have been observed. The pleasure is also not fettered by ordinary laws. The government has the power to punish any of its servants for misconduct committed not only in the course of official duties but also committed in private life. Article 309 is to be read subject to articles 310 clause 1 and 311. The pleasure can be exercised by the president or the governor either with the aid and advice of council of ministers or by the authority specified in the act or rules made under article 309. Now we will be discussing the limitations on the doctrine of pleasure. Doctrine of pleasure is subject to various provisions in the constitution that is article 310 clause 2, article 311 clause 2 and fundamental rights under part 3. Article 310 clause 2 exempts certain persons from the applicability of this doctrine. Moreover, holders of specified offices like judges of supreme court and high court etc. are also exempted from the applicability of this article. Article 320 clause 3 also imposes, imposes a limit on pleasure as it provides for the consultation with the respective public survey commission on all disciplinary matters affecting government employees. A government servant cannot be compelled to continue in service against his will after reaching the age of superannuation except where his service is required in public interest. This power of president or governor may be done away with by repealing article 310 clause 1 by the act of parliament. Now we are going to discuss a very important uh, topic that is constitutional protection to civil servants given under article 311. No person who is a member of civil service of the union or an all India service or a service, civil service of a state or holds a civil post under the union or the state shall be dismissed or removed by an authority subordinate to that by which he is appointed. And secondly, no such person as aforesaid shall be dismissed or removed or reduced in rank except after an inquiry in which he has been informed of the charges against him and given a reasonable opportunity of being heard in respect of those charges. 
Now what do we mean by inquiry and reasonable opportunity of being heard? It is mandatory under article 311 clause 2 to make an inquiry before the dismissal, removal or reduction in rank of a civil servant. In Khemchand vs Union of India decided by the Supreme Court in the year 1958, the Supreme Court held that the reasonable opportunity of being heard means firstly an opportunity to deny his guilt and prove his innocence, secondly an opportunity to defend himself by cross examining the witnesses produced against him and by examining himself in support of his defense, thirdly an inquiry to make his representation as to why the proposed punishment should not be inflicted upon him, this is show cause. Suspension is neither dismissal nor approval nor removal or not reduction in rank. So the employee cannot claim a reasonable opportunity being heard. Now we are here we are discussing we are going to discuss the cases where opportunity of being heard is excluded. The first one is suspend that suspension, suspension is neither dismissal or removal nor it is a reduction in rank. So the employee cannot claim a reasonable opportunity of being heard. Where a person is dismissed or removed or reduced in rank on the grounds of misconduct which has led to his conviction on a criminal charge. Where the concerned authority is satisfied that for some reason to be recorded in writing, it is impracticable to hold such inquiry, then also opportunity of being heard is not given. Similarly, there is another circumstance where opportunity of being heard is not given, that is where the president or the governor or the as the case may be is satisfied that in the interest of the security of the state, it is not expedient to hold such an inquiry. Similarly, there is another case that is an employee cannot claim an opportunity of being heard before he is compulsorily retired from service. The services of a temporary servant or a probationer can be terminated under the rules of his employment and article 311 of the constitution would not also apply in such a case. These provisions are, are also given in one of the cases decided by Supreme Court that is state of Punjab versus Sukh Raj Bahadur 1968. So to conclude the whole presentation, I would like to mention that what we discussed. Firstly, we discussed the uh, executive organ of the state, it consists it consists of two, number first, number one is union executive and then there is state executive. Union executive consists of the president, prime minister and the council of ministers, whereas the state executive consists of the governor, chief minister and the council of ministers. We discussed various powers, various functions and duties of these officials. Then we discussed the, the uh, powers and duties of attorney general as well as advocate general. Concluding the first, present, uh, first part of the presentation, I will now start with the second part of the presentation. In this part we, we talked about the services under the state and we discussed that various officials belonging to various service, civil services, they are appointed at the pleasure of the president or the governor as the case may be. It is very necessary to protect these public services from any kind of influence from political parties because these are the basis of any democracy and therefore we need to protect and upgrade these services rather than being influenced by any kind of political pressure. That is all, thank you.